So myself, Sinjun No from BA third semester, and I will be the moderator for today's debate competition. So uh, I will I welcome each and every one of you to today's Indra Departmental Debate Competition. On the uh, the topic will be is artificial intelligence a threat to human civilization. So uh, artificial intelligence refers to the stimulation of human intelligence in machines that are programmed to think like humans and mimic their actions. The term may also be applied to any machine that exhibits traits associated with a human mind, such as learning and problem solving. Artificial intelligence has massive potential advantages, but as every bright side has a darker version in it, artificial intelligence also has some disadvantages. So to debate on this topic, we have six participants, three uh, participants from the, from the motion and three against the motion. So let me introduce you to the participants. Uh, the participants for the motion are Ms. Abinu from third semester, Ms. Lika G. Awumi from first semester, and Mr. Hitolo Loring Rengma from third semester. And the participants against the motion are Ms. Sigrino from fifth semester, Ms. Vinibi Chishi from first semester, and lastly, Mr. Harisa from fifth semester. Now, let me introduce you all to the judges for today's debate competition. First, we have Dr. Deba Brada Sudrater, Department in Church and Assistant Professor, Department of Economics. Second, we have Dr. Anirudha Faber. He did his PhD and MA from Ignor University, LLB from GLBC Bombay, LLM from University of Bombay, from Okwene, and he is currently serving as an Assistant Professor of Political Science, Department of Political Science, that's all, in college. And he is also a former advocate from uh, in the Bombay High Court, US or AS. And lastly, we have with us Dr. Sabur Ali, Assistant Professor, Department of Political Science. And uh, for today's, uh, the timekeeper will be Mr. Danger Bomb from fifth semester. So uh, without moving on to the debate competition, uh, let me briefly highlight the floor and the rules of the debate to all of us, for all of us. I mean, Okay, uh, so there will be two rounds and the debate will be open with a team supporting the motion followed by a member of the opposing team. And uh, the duration given to each speaker will be four minutes in the first round and two minutes in the second round. And a ver verbal reminder to conclude will be given by the timekeeper. <clears throat> the other rules are negative points for violating the established norms of the debates. Debat debaters must not read their arguments. Existing the dam limit in presenting will result in negative marking. Dam was that due to connectivity issue or network problems shall be subjected to respective judge discretion. And also the debaters are encouraged not to use slides, instead be present on the screen in person virtually. And the, uh, the debaters will be judged on the following criteria. One, organization and clarity of ideas. Two, use of arguments and relevance. Three, use of examples and facts. Four, use of rebuttal in terms of defense. And lastly, presentation, style, and clarity of speech. Uh, so without further ado, let's move on to the first round. So for this, I call upon the first participant, Ms. Abinu from the team supporting the motion to kindly take your time, followed by Ms. Sikrino from the opposing team, after which uh, the other participants may also take your time accordingly. All the best to all the participants. Excuse me. I'm audible. Yes, you are audible. Oh, all right. Okay then. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, on behalf of Team Motion, uh, myself, Apinyo, as a team leader, along with Lika and Hitolo, would be speaking on uh, artificial intelligence as a threat against human civilization. So, uh, artificial intelligence. The word itself, as we all know, it was coined by uh, John McCarthy, and then its uh, meaning is simply uh, smart machines that are designed in order to do simple tasks that we want. So, uh, it more or less like has its origin from the time of Aristotle. However, uh, we can notice that it gained more spotlight during the Industrial Revolution period. That's just a brief uh, introduction. And going on to my point, uh, the first point that I would like to say uh, regarding its threat is uh, loss of tradition. You see, whenever uh, something new is introduced, whenever uh, new inventions or new creations are introduced in the society, uh, it is obvious that some old trends or some old practices that people do will be replaced. It will either be replaced, it will either be uh, totally changed, or it will just be altered a little. However, we know that the tradition touch itself uh, would lose its originality. Hence, as a result, uh, our, uh, our next generations and so on, uh, they won't be aware of uh, what we practice uh, in order to keep our tradition alive. In terms of economic, I can give the example of uh, firm industry. Let's say that an owner, instead of uh, employing people, he starts uh, employing uh, uh, artificial intelligence, like he starts applying those. So of, it's obvious that he will earn a lot. It's obvious that uh, he will be able to, uh, you know, like save more of his time. However, uh, what do you think about those people who will be left behind, uh, those people who will be unemployed? That term is uh, usually what we know as uh, technological unemployment. Uh, second is uh, personal motive. Even world-renowned people like Stephen Hawking, he himself said that uh, the efforts to create like uh, thinking machines it itself can cause a threat to our own existence. So that really supports what I'm trying to say. Because uh, if I take it in the politics term, say India is a democratic country, uh, what if someday some leaders they uh, they get to get a chance and they win the election and they start uh, applying the methods uh, which the public do not agree with? So uh, that would obviously lead to a um, corrupted country, I guess. So uh, in that sense, we can just get a gist of it, the motive of the person who is uh, taking uh, control of it, or say Silicon Valley, which we are very aware of, the rather a hotspot, a, a, a technological hotspot. What if somebody someday tries to take uh, advantage of it and use it for his own benefit? The result would be something which we can't predict. And the other point is no room for errors. What I mean no room for errors is because uh, the uh, designs that people make, like uh, the artificial intelligence, they are created in different forms. So they are created in a pattern with patterns, with algorithms, uh, and then it is built in such a way that uh, inputs are converted into outputs, and the results are obviously predictable. However, as human beings, uh, we have that human morality, morality in us, that uh, human being connection in us. So uh, we tend to make mistakes and we tend to learn from our mistakes and we tend to grow, uh, you know, we tend to get better from that. So in one way or the other, mistake itself, it leads to, uh, uh, it leads to unknown discoveries. Hence, uh, that, uh, hence uh, that supports my point. And last but not the least is dependency. Growing up in, uh, uh, you know, growing up in a surrounding with people, uh, we ourselves can consider we can consider ourselves as victims of our own cell phones, of uh, artificial uh, robots like Google, Siri, or even but mobile games. Time's up. So, yes. Okay then. Thank you so much. Good morning, uh, good afternoon. <laughs> My name is Yeh Kino. I'm from fifth semester. I'm here to justify that artificial intelligence is not a threat to human civilization. Artificial intelligence is a branch of computer science that uh, emphasizes the development of intelligence with uh, machines to think and work like humans. Uh, the aim of AI is to make the functions of uh, machines that can connect with the human mind, uh, such as learning and problem solving, like we do in Google, uh, which provide us with functions to make our work uh, easier, like for example, speech recognition, learning, planning, etc. Uh, let me emphasize further. Google is
the search engines, uh, which is also which is an artificial intelligence, help us in searching solutions to our problems uh, within seconds, say to book a flight or train. Google gives us tons of uh, uh, thousands to select which suit us best and book our book our tickets uh, or to search uh, ideas for our studies. Or, uh, it gives us tons of ideas within seconds. Thus, AI has been serving as knowledge provider to many people and uh, students. Another great feature of AI is uh, language translation. This can also be accessed through search engines like Yahoo, Google, or language translation apps, uh, which is really helpful for a lot of people across the globe. It is also a great tool for tourists who like to travel. Um, we can also learn different languages from around the world with the help of AI. If we want to learn, it will be convenient for us backwards as well. We don't uh, have the opportunity to learn such languages uh, in universities. Um, uh, like say for example, Japanese, Korean, Russian, etc. Uh, name any language, we can learn it with the help of AI. I myself have been learning Japanese language um, from the help of uh, Google, since I have a lot of interest in watching anime and I love Japanese culture a lot. Uh, well, I may not be able to speak fluently, but I have learned some basic words and sentences with the help of Google. Uh, another point that I would like to emphasize on is thinking. I would say, uh, AI, uh, I would say AI is playing a very important role in banking because all our activities and transactions is being processed through AI in the form of computers and supercomputers used by the bank. Um, it also provides security for our banking because AI uh, stores the details of the users and of the user, and hence it doesn't allow other people than the user to. Uh, access that certain account with the, uh, with the advancement of AI, it has also made banking easier by providing online banking so we don't have to go to bank and wait in long queues, but um, we can do our work from the comfort of our homes. Um, this is largely benefiting us in the pandemic situation. First warning. AI is also helping um, the bank to extend their customer service further with the help of it. They can personally um, reach out to the customers and help them uh, uh, by providing customizing plan, loan offers, um, and uh, updating them about the current plan, etc. Uh, thus, AI has been um, made the active. AI has made the hectic banking world a lot easier than it was. Uh, it helped us learn foreign languages from around the world. Um, and uh, it has also made uh, our life easier. Therefore, I strongly believe that AI is not a threat to human civilization. But these are only some few positive points. More will be explained by my fellow team. Oh, am I able? Yes, yes, you are. Okay, good, af good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lika, representing the motion. And today, as I take this uh, debate, I would, um, I take this as a privilege to enlighten my fellow opinion and to make myself uh, once again clear that AI is indeed a treat to human team. Uh, I would like to draw um, my very uh, very obvious point to justify my statement as to what I think AI is a treat to humanity. Firstly, with full confidence, you might tell that AI is indeed a treat to. Um, firstly, with full confidence, you might tell me that AI makes our work easier. For example, these days, especially in in the household of uh, Western countries, we see that uh, a person doing. Uh, work with a voice command, which means they can simply uh, do anything with a voice command, like uh, open a door or window example or anything it can be. Uh, they can, it makes our work easier, yes. But mind you, so um, we depend too much on AI that uh, we forgot or uh, we became lazy and we became lazy and laziness it help, uh, it it makes us uh, makes our life spent so um, uh, let's 
also the uh, researchers they say that business can uh, lead our life uh, or make our life um, uh, spend um, so uh, let's utilize our potential and keep ourselves busy because um, making busy help us live longer instead of depending too much on AI we, which will um, eventually kill the whole of humanity uh, secondly, weapons automation. Uh, these weapons could enable assassination, or alternatively, they could um, become weapons of um, weapons of depression, allowing uh, dictator and warlords to subdue their people. Example: guns, uh, which can fire human, or many more missile, missiles defense systems, such as iron drum, has an autonomous uh, targeting capability. This consists uh, of robotic weapons, also killer robots and slaughter bots. Thirdly, in this uh, 21st century, where machines are doing everything, we cannot deny the fact that machines are replacing human uh, human beings. In Japan, the robots are even teaching English uh, English to students, um, and with that, the rate of unemployment is increasing. At the very first place, according to the Yale News. Um, published on May 23, uh, 2002, it says that rising unemployment causes higher death rate, which goes to prove the fact that AI are not only replacing humans, but it's also um, re responsible for the high rate of mortality. Machines, yeah, machines perform much That's more efficiently efficiency as compared to human beings. It said that automation will displace um, between 400 to 800 million jobs by 2030. And as a result, in this fewer human intervention, which may cause immense disorder in the employment scenario. Uh, Task AI is indeed, without a doubt, uh, without no doubt, a treat to humanity. Having said that, I would like to set my case. Thank you. Am I well? Yes, you are. Okay, good evening everyone, respected judges, teacher and student presenter. I'm Vinny VK Chishi, and I'm from Bay First Semester. I'll be speaking against the motion. So I strongly say no. Artificial intelligence is not a threat to human civilization. Okay, first, let me tell you what is artificial intelligence actually. Artificial intelligence is a simulation to is a simulation of human intelligence in machines that are programmed to think like human and mimic their actions. It can also be applied to any machine that exhibit the trait associated with uh, human minds, such as uh, learning and problem solving. Okay, for uh, first example, say well. Well was among the first invention to condemn the human labor, and it was invented by uh, ancient Greek. Uh, since then, human curiosity and meticulous effort helped them uh, help them for new invention uh, and discovered in every field. And discovered in everything. In modern age of technology, the innovation of AI is in, has been involved almost each day to make our life more easier and simpler. Uh, the introduction of artificial intelligence, say like robotic, which perform uh, every functions, uh, starting uh, hanging from uh, hanging from space toleration to entertainment, and can also assist to uh, home store automobiles and other tasks uh, and also now social medias for example say like letter which usually takes week or even a month to reach a particular person but now with the help of modern gizmo say like television automobiles smartphone in a form of software like whatsapp twitter facebook instagram which are usually using uh, take just take even a fraction of minutes or seconds to reach a particular person Artificial intelligence is also uh, getting better at doing text translation to voice translation, as well as voice translation to text translation. Uh, it helps people uh, with a disability on our special needs in numerous ways. Uh, example like disability, uh, handicapped, deaf, etc. Uh, artificial intelligence is also playing an important role in education today. A good example is online classes, which are going through. As we all know, uh, school and colleges are closed, but we can still ha continue our classes or studies with the help of artificial intelligence. Not only uh, classes, but 
uh, referring to this debate and all, we can still have that with the help of artificial intelligence, which is only for our benefit. Thus, artificial intelligence can dramatically improve the efficiency of workplaces and can also augment the work we human can do. I know and I guarantee that nobody here wants to go back to the days of Stone Age, where there was, uh, where there was nothing uh, and certainly no uh, automobile, no smartphones. Some advantages of uh, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence drives down the time taken to perform attacks. It also increases uh, efficiency. Artificial intelligence enables the execution of uh, complex tasks without significance cost outlays. Uh, so we can't, or I can't, blindly say that artificial intelligence is a threat to human civilization. Indeed, it plays an important role in our life. Thank you. Since uh, Mr. Hidalo Lorin could not join, uh, we will move on to the next participant, that is Mr. Harisa from the opposing team. Can we take your time? Hello, good afternoon to your respected judges, moderator, my dear opponents, uh, fellow and my fellow friends present here this afternoon. My name is Arisa from fifth semester, and I'm here to speak against the motion on the topic, is artificial intelligence a threat to human civilization? I say no, human civil, uh, artificial intelligence is not a threat to human civilization. Let me point out uh, some points why I believe so. Now, let's start from our home, smart home devices. Once I was watching YouTube and I saw this advertisement about an AC where the user was using voice recognition to open the AC and set the temperature that he wanted to set it in. Now, this has made his life very easy and it can make our lives very easier. And then with the advancement of AI, I believe that even without using voice recognition, just by turning on the AC, the AC will be able to analyze the environment and then give the suitable temperature that uh, will help us uh, be comfortable in our life, uh, in our in our homes. The next is, while researching for this debate, I came across this fridge, well, uh, which could um, suggest, uh, suggest the products, suggest vegetables that needs to be kept in the fridge, and then uh, suggest also uh, warn the user about the things that are getting over that needs to be restocked, and also suggest the user uh, what he needs to eat uh, so to lead a healthy life. Now, these are only possible only because of AI, and it is uh, making our lives easier and better. Now my next point is digital assistance. We all have heard about Google Assistant, Siri and all. So um, what these are making is not making our life worse or is not uh, stopping us from having interaction with the other human, uh, other, uh, other humans. But uh, this is helping us use our smartphones and be uh, smartphone iPhones and be convenient with uh, what we are using now because and, I, and let me remind you that smartphone itself is an artificial intelligence. And this artificial intelligence, with the, because of this advancement, this artificial intelligence, uh, we are using a feature of artificial intelligence to use another feature of artificial intelligence, which is amazing, uh, if you ask me. So, and then it is making our life easier. And then my next point is uh, GPS. We all know what GPS is. It gives us direction um, of the places that we want to go to. Now, if you are visiting a new place that you have never been able to, you might get lost. But if you have GPS, then you will be able to roam each and every corner of that place like it was, it was your own, like you were roaming in your own colony backyard. So that is what uh, it helps us with. And then in my next point, I would like to emphasize on AI as an alternative for humans in dangerous places and during emergencies. Now, according to the data from Labor and Employment Ministry, 3,562 workers died in factory accidents in India between 2014 and 16, and more more than 51,000 were injured, which means that an average of three person died each day, and 47 person were injured every day. And 377 deaths in the uh, mining industry were reported in 2015 to 2017. Now we could avoid these deaths. We could avoid these deaths if we were using AI in the industry. Now I'm not. I'm not saying that we are going to completely uh, overturn AI and 
throw away all the human uh, workers. But what I'm saying is in the dangerous places that is hazardous for us, like for humans, like in gas industries, uh, chemical industries, mining industries, these places are hazardous for human beings, even without the accident. So using AI in these places will really help us and will really save lives. And another is in the medical field, like uh, doctors sometimes make mistakes during emergencies, deep being pressurized by the emergency situation, like they make mistakes, uh, giving wrong diagnosis of the patient's diseases and sicknesses. So, but AI will not uh, make such uh, mistakes. And then um, even during emergencies, it will be able to give accurate, uh, accurate results and will be able to save the uh, patient's life. So, all Time these things are not... Um, I'm not hampering our life, but we can see that from the above points, it is making our lives easier and also we can save life with the help of AI. Thank you so much. Uh, this Mr. Hidelon is not here still, we'll be skipping him. So that wraps up the first round. So now we'll be moving on to the second round. And so for the first uh, for the second round, uh, I request the participants from the motion, from the team supporting the motion to take your time, uh, followed by the opposing team. The opposing team, please take your time. Whoever is going first. Okay, uh, the opposing team against the motion. Okay, um, then I'll be uh, going first. Um, like I would like to first of all, um point out um, this um, thing about the uh, first speaker that said uh, for the motion. Um, she said uh, about uh, thinking machines, building thinking machines. So like, mm, uh, I would not add anything new, new but I would uh, like to oppose you with your own words. Like you said uh, about something about making thinking machines and then uh, in the, a bit in the later part of your speech, you said uh, about, uh, something uh, about giving input that uh, that something input gives output so uh, machines are not something that uh, can think but uh, it's just that like using uh, using your own words that it's just that something is put inside and then only it, uh, it gives an, an output unlike humans who uh, we think we think and then we uh, like we how do we say we process the information and we think like our human minds work in a different way other than uh, the machines that works. So that is thinking, human thinking, but uh, machines does not think, but it just uh, gives the output that has been given in the out. Uh, they just give the output of what has been given as input, uh, as a result. And then um, talking about, and then uh, for the second speaker, I would like to uh, oppose you like for weapons. Like I agree that uh, of course AI has really um, been, AI has really advanced and like even machines can now, uh, even weapons can now have targets and then like they can just go and hit the place. But uh, I want to ask you like, who is the person, uh, who is the user? Who is the one um, giving the commands? Who is the one uh, making the order to launch those rockets? It is, I believe that it is not the AI, but the user on the other end of the AI, that is uh, human beings. That is, mm. so it is not the AI that is a uh, trend, a threat to human civilization, but it is rather the human humans that are a threat to us, to ourselves. We are a threat to ourselves. Like Time is up. the negative thinking of the humans is what uh, is what is a threat to human civilization. Thank you. The next team that is for the motion. Please take your time.
Uh, okay, uh, I would like to answer uh, our brother here who has uh, talked about my point. So, uh, see, about uh, conversion of input to its output, that is simply what a human has prepared. We, we are aware of it that uh, AI, they are building softwares that are performed to do uh, tasks. So as a result, uh, that is something which humans have done. However, with regarding to thinking machines, which uh, I I added Stephen Hawkins as an example, like um, myself as well, if I can give you some examples, uh, even in our current generations, we aren't aware of it, but there are people building robots to have debate among each other, which we are doing right now. And then if I can give you another example, there is a, a, a hard, I mean, a technology built by Japan, it's called Getbox, and there are people actually talk with a live robot. More or less like that, uh, Miku Hatsune, I don't know if everyone is aware of it or not, but that is a vocal lead where a human being, he, uh, she, uh, she uh, talks on behalf of it. However, uh, the fact is that the person, uh, regardless of uh, the, so sorry, regardless of that gate box being controlled by an, uh, a person or not, it responds upon the uh, human who is questioning to him. She can respond to him in any form of sentences. And so like, it's like uh, they are being designed in such a way that uh, they can, uh, you know, uh, counter back any, any kind of questions that that person asks. As a result, uh, I'm really sorry. I'm really, I really can't come up with the points. Uh, um, yes, that would be all uh, I would like to conclude with these points. Uh, some of my opinions say about unemployment. Yeah, unemployment, uh, artificial intelligence affect unemployment, but not exactly, or uh, does not impact all the jobs. Yeah, it may affect some jobs like human resources, sales managers, marketing, etc., etc., but it does not affect all the jobs. Instead, it gives a positive, which takes our repetitive, repetitive or dangerous tax, it frees up the humans. Uh, workforce, workforce. Uh, artificial intelligence, it could increase uh, happiness and, satis and job satisfaction, actually. Uh, let me say something about robot, robotic hair. Robotic, uh, in until in 2017, there are 3,412 robots in the world. Uh, and robot can influence in <laughs> Robots can influence us too. They have emotion of their own when they become very smart. So in this modern age of technology, uh, where robots are playing, uh, where robots are playing important role and even making, started making uh, us, started making us satisfaction and, okay, let me end up here. Okay, um, as my friend says, um, unemployment. How, how you can solve employment, brothers? Um, robot, uh, robot transformers were the intention of creating robot was to protect and watch over humankind. Um, but later the robots started killing the humans. Um, yeah, uh, Egypt. One example, a Japanese factory worker, <clears throat> Kinji Ureda, was killed by a robot on December 8, 1981. The robot pinned him against an adjacent and had no knowledge. Well, artificial intelligence is programmed to do something beneficial or good, but there is a dangerous effect, malfunction or breakdown. It can be dangerous to the extent of taking the lives of innocent. Uh, also, on, about the online classes, yes, um, Online classes, it takes it takes one person to isolation. Also, it we we lack communication skills, and yeah, uh, during the online classes, uh, it has many. Um, you know what? Uh, we we can't be taking class like um, person to person, and we don't know what all are doing there. Uh, top presenting in the class, like. 
yeah and especially exams we can't fully uh promise that uh, we can't fully say that online exams or online are helpful because uh, we don't know where the sources are coming from especially goes to students like also um, uh, ai it will kill the whole of humanity um, Oh yes, yeah, machines are bringing everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I want to like ask these questions to Miss Lika. That uh, you say that um, AI makes our life or health bad, and we should live longer, like not depending on that. So, um, I just want to say is that AI is creating for well-being of everyone. It just depends on the user. Mm, like, how are you sup uh, supposed to spend your life in this generation without the help of AI? Uh, everything is done with AI now, and for that online classes and all, uh, it's because of AI that we were able to give our test and we were able to um, like finish it up our syllabus and all. So uh, it just depends on the uh, user and the link that that which uh, provide us um, to, yeah, that's all. Thank you. The last Two participants may take the time of for the conclusion remark. Okay, uh, on behalf of Team Motion, uh, I'll be concluding uh, with, with our points. So. AI, it can be understood as a short-term motive for a moment, but in the long run, we never know what one's invention will take a toll on its own master. It should therefore be applied, used only when needed. No matter how much time is put into pre-deployment designs, a system specification often results in unintended behavior the first time it encounters a new scenario. For example, Microsoft stay behave inoffensively during pre-deployment testing but was too easily baited into offensive uh, behavior when interacting with real users. With behaviors like this, it is likely that they will become a threat to humans. AI could replace human if we get in its way during the long run, considering the advancement and need for supercomputer we are relying on. Humans will one day sooner or later fall in the hands of its own creation and might be someday a subject to enslavement if uh, not put into, into one's thought. Uh, with this, I would like to conclude uh, our point. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's try and look at this entire AI discussion from a different angle. Say, so consider our life as a process and consider every day as a process that is divided into single steps and and then consider AI as an autonomous process automation that provides us with mm, more convenience and thus makes our life easier. So, in uh, like AI is just a side part. It's just a side part that is helping us go through our daily life process, uh, our life in the in this process of life. And but I believe that what we should be discussing is not really. AI as a threat to human civilization, but the biggest threat to humanity is humans itself, like I said earlier. Like the insatiable hunger of humans is what's threatening, it's what's really threatening us, you know. Like, and then in the process, AI is being used by humans uh, as a tool uh, to fulfill the uh, hunger of the, our, of, our, our, to fulfill our insatiable hunger. Like, the hunger may be of different kinds, political power, money, uh, or just personal grudges and all. Like, 
these things are uh, is what's uh is what these things are more of a threat to human civilization than ai because this these feelings and this insatiable hunger is what is making the human use this AI as a tool to, um, as a tool to, uh, to, how do I say this? As a tool to disrupt the peace that is in the society. So in the end, uh, the tool that is made is not, uh, the tool that is made is not the threat, but the the maker and the user is the real threat to our human civilization. With that, uh, I'd like to conclude. Uh, um, thank you. So with that, um, that will be it for a debate competition. But before declaring the result, uh, I would like to give time to our respective panel of judges if they have anything to say. Okay, uh, if I am permitted to share my views, I would really love to share uh, what I have experienced, uh, what I what I feel actually about <clears throat> the debate and uh, how I actually perceive the debate competition. Uh, thank you so much for, first of all, uh, for inviting me as one of the judges. Debate has been very close to my heart uh, because uh, whenever I judge a debate competition or uh, whenever I organize debate competition, my mind always uh, goes back to the time when I used to be a contestant. Throughout my a journey as a student, uh, maybe uh, undergrad student as well as a postgrad student, and then later on a law student. I I have uh, personally participated in number of debate competitions. So thank you so much for uh, you know taking me back in my days. Nostalgia is always beautiful, not necessary. It is painful. So dear friends, for me, uh, debate is an attempt to cling to the illusion of uh, control provided by a point of view designed to keep the ego in place. Dialogue is an attempt to dance with the unknown at the risk of losing what we think we know. This is my view. And also, I believe a debate has one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to facilitate the exchange of ideas directly between candidates, participants, and that's it. So one good thing that I've observed is uh, you all have observed the decorum, the rules uh, of the event. That is point number one. Second important thing is I also like the way all of you have used the language. There was no anger. There was no unnecessary aggression. There was no unparliamentary language, so I'm I'm really I'm really happy to observe this, and also I'm very happy to know the topic as well. You know about uh, artificial intelligence. So uh, you know, from Siri to self-driving cars, artificial intelligence is a progressing rapidly. You know very well, okay, especially those who are using those smartphones and laptops and computers and so on and so forth. Our entire life is, you know, influenced by artificial intelligence, either directly or indirectly. While science fiction often portrays uh, artificial intelligence as robots with human-like characteristics, artificial intelligence can encompass anything from Google's search algorithms to IBM's Watson to autonomous weapon system. You just name it, guys. Artificial intelligence today is properly known as uh, narrow artificial intelligence or weak artificial intelligence in that it is designed to perform narrow tasks. That is uh, facial recognition or internet searches or driving a car. However, uh, what I perceive and uh, 
what I visualize is that the long-term goal of many researchers <clears throat> in the field of artificial intelligence is to create general artificial intelligence, AGI, or you may call it a strong artificial intelligence. While narrow artificial intelligence may outperform humans at whatever its specific task is, like playing chess or solving equations, artificial, uh, general artificial intelligence would outperform humans at nearly every cognitive task. So in this larger context, and uh, in a very complicated as well as complex platform, I believe this debate has a valid reason to be organized. And uh, on the other hand, if you take the legal framework that governs the overall artificial intelligence, you'll be surprised to know that there is no legal framework as such. Okay, so it is not just the the space law, which is uh, still in its uh, infant age, but also laws related to artificial intelligence are also at a very infant stage. So whether artificial intelligence uh, is going to be beneficial for us or will it impose threat to us, that will not be decided by the artificial intelligence, that will not be decided by the machine, but ultimately that will be decided by the supreme human intelligence. And in this context, in, uh, on the basis of this complex platform, I have uh, judged this debate. Uh, I will take one or two minutes to you know, jot down the scores since I'm sharing my thoughts with you. But I really want all of you to understand that it is not just the present, but also the future would belong to a proper, a cordial cohabitation of man and the machine. St uh, Stephen Hawking uh, once warned us that uh, there is a possibility that one day the machine intelligence will outperform the human intelligence. I don't want to comment on that because uh, many people have already commented on it, many debates have been going on, but I still believe and I still want to believe in the supremacy of human intelligence. We are the seeds, and we are the one who are capable to grow the trees out of the seed. So with these words, I congratulate to each one of you. And most importantly, I congratulate the Department of uh, Economics, its head, Dr. Devrata, and uh, his faculty members. Because choosing this topic, is never an easy job, but he made it. And most importantly, the participants have given justice to it. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to share my views. Uh, give me one or two minutes. I will jot down the score and uh, share with head of the department so that you know the final score would be communicated to you. Thank you so much. All the best. Keep debating. Keep learning. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, please, uh, Dr. Sabur, yeah. please uh, give us your valuable yeah. feedback. Yeah, first of all, I want to give my thanks to the Department of Economics and our beloved Dev Prada. It was a very wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, according to my understanding, the second round was uh, that much effective. Um, uh, the students didn't prepare well in the second round. This is my understanding. My I am coming to that point. However, I want to I want to say something about the artificial intelligence. The field is now seriously emerging every look and corner. It enters in the military, business, everywhere now it enters. So here, the artificial intelligence. First of all, we have to. Uh, give some uh, preference to the from which and uh, corner the artificial intelligence is emerging. Mm -hmm. The market world only introducing artificial intelligence. 
and the market world going to control the entire the entire population of the world so what i am trying to say here the artificial intelligence going to give such a direction to the human society in which direction they have to think okay so so the here we have to come over from the artificial intelligence for that we have to think beyond the boundaries so for example uh, if you search in the facebook something about the shoe or laptop so around your social media so always this kind of advertisement will only comes so here what they are trying to say they are limiting our thinking pattern so in one or another time this it will lead to the suppression okay in this perspective we have to think uh, think beyond the boundaries so in based on this we have to uh, address the artificial intelligence and however we cannot stop the artificial artificial intelligence uh, uh, anirudha dr anirudha mentions that still there is no law for the artificial intelligence i hope the law somewhat can help to the human society to handle the artificial intelligence yeah it was nice i have we have given our um, our mark the head of the department will announce it thanks for the once again thanks for this opportunity anyone wants to add anything more again thank you dr sabur dr anirudh for your valuable feedback uh, both of you highlighted the importance as well as the drawbacks of uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, i am also of the opinion that uh, for the development of the society uh, role of science is uh, crucial and uh, we are using technology because of the development of science and technology uh, so here uh regarding the threat to human civilization ai i feel that it's depend on uh, the human being with the people how we use this technology this can be born as well as being uh but as uh, dr anirudh rightly pointed out that uh, still we don't have any law so i think uh, over the uh, yeah in the near future when there will be a threat of uh, technology or threat of ai i'm sure there will be new laws to uh, uh, new laws and uh, uh, yeah that's it and uh, lastly i would like to um, uh appreciate all the participants uh for for volunteering themselves and uh, uh speaking on this crucial uh topic this is a content of contemporary topic and uh, its importance okay uh, with regard to uh the disadvantages and threat will be realized in the near future uh i would like to thank uh miss lily uh, sanchumlo tenza um uh for uh, for being active uh for taking the active role uh in, while conducting this program i would also like to thank uh, assistant dean uh mr um anjan behra and uh, our a uh, respected vice principal ma'am for joining us 
uh, thank you. Uh, within a minute, I think uh, we will have our score ready. Uh, so just uh, have patience and wait for two minutes. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Aniruddha, Dr. Sapur Ali, and Dr. Deva Brother for giving your views and feedback. It was indeed very knowledgeable. So while waiting for the result, we can have a few minutes. I mean, we can have a question and our session now. Just say to the three minutes if you have any, uh, if there's any questions. You can switch on your microphone or use the chat box. Well, may I ask one question? Sure, sure, please. Uh, what motivated uh, Department of Economics to take up such a wonderful topic? I'm, I'm, I'm really curious, you know, how, how did you guys come up with this? Anybody would like to answer to the question? Yes, yes, anyone can answer. I'm, I'm really curious, seriously. Okay, so if lecturers have come up with the topic, then at least you must be having some idea that why this topic came up. Because I'll tell you why <clears throat> I'm so curious to know about it. Because uh, this artificial intelligence is a talk of a modern day. Okay, see, have you heard about data science? Data science is a is a is a new career career avenue. Okay, which which is just uh, coming up. Right. So basically, uh, on one hand, uh, new uh, job opportunities are coming up. On the other hand, you know, uh, artificial intelligence and theories around it also coming up. So therefore, uh, you know, I think uh, uh, it is really important for me to understand why this topic came up because I have a proposal and I'm sharing with you all of you that in coming future, maybe in few months, okay, if you guys are comfortable from the Department of Economics, okay, we together can organize some small seminar kind of thing okay, on this artificial intelligence. So that is why I wanted to know. Dr. Devrata, if you want to share something. Uh, definitely, uh, we would love to cooperate with you. Um, this is a uh, as I said, this is a uh, contemporary topic, and I think it has immense scope uh, in the near future. So definitely, why not? Okay, um, I think uh, the final scores are ready, and uh, I feel that uh, yeah, as we have seen, that there was stiff competition, and uh, yes, uh, uh, I will I will start with the. Uh, start with uh, third position and uh, this third position is uh, secured by uh, uh, I am finding it difficult to pronounce the name say uh, uh, say say crino say crino sir yeah please pronounce it again uh, okay um Second spot, it is uh, uh, by Vinibi Shishi from first semester, and the winner of this competition is Harusel. And your score was forty-two. 
Benifi, your score was 40. And third position, say Crimeo, your score was 37. And then um, the fourth spot, it was a, a fourth spot. We have a Pino as well as Lika. Uh, so once again, I would like to congratulate Harusev and uh, uh, I also want to congratulate uh, and also appreciate especially Vinibi and Lika uh, uh, for participating and uh, your uh, uh, being the first semester student, um, you have done a good job. Uh, with this, I would like to conclude. Uh, over to you, Samchindra. Thank you so much, Dr. Deva Brother, for announcing the result. So, uh, I would also like to congratulate um, the winners as well as all the participants for actively taking part. Um, even if you may not win this time, uh, don't feel low because for good ideas and true innovation, we all need human interaction, conflict, arguments, and debate. So, well done, all of you. So, we did say we have come to the end. Uh, so, finally, I would like to thank Mr. Anjan Bera, Assistant Dean, and our Vice Principal, Mrs. Hilwa Salorin, for joining with us. And also, not forgetting the, all the audience for joining with us. It would not have been possible. I mean, this uh, debate would not have been successful without each and every one of your presence. So, thank you, everyone.